Hi, uh, welcome to the next module uh, that is develop project management plan. Uh, so what are the key things we covered so far? We started with uh, project initiation and the input to initiation where the, the, uh, the statement of work, uh, a copy of the contract, sometimes it is available, enterprise environmental factors and organizational process assets and we get into initiation two steps in initiation the first thing is done uh, it's all done by the project sponsor uh, the first process under initiation was uh, develop uh, a project charter and the second process under initiation was uh, prepare a stakeholder register uh, and while doing the charter a project manager is identified and uh, appointed and the project manager takes the project into the planning phase so this is the develop project management plan is the first process under planning and performed by the project manager uh, contrary to the belief that plan is the schedule uh, so plan is not the schedule schedule is only part of the plan uh, a plan is a is a is a document which comprises of uh, various sections. Uh, typically, it is an MS Word document which has uh, which has the team structures, the roles and responsibilities, uh, the risk management section, the quality management section, the human resource management section, uh, the procurement uh, uh, section. So, with different sections, uh, and schedule becomes part of the plan. And within planning, uh, we collect the detailed requirements because so far we were we were operating through the statement of work which is the highest level of requirements now during planning we elaborate those requirements into detailed requirements then we define the scope typically we talk about the requirements document version 1.0 becomes the scope and once the scope is defined any changes to it will have to undergo a change management procedure and once the scope is defined, that gets decomposed further into a work breakdown structure. So we'll be discussing about the work breakdown structure in detail in the subsequent phases. And once the WBS is done, uh, then those work packages are decomposed into activities. And once the activities are known, we sequence those activities based on their logical dependencies and we estimate the resources required to execute those activities and we then then we develop the schedule and we estimate the cost and determine the budget the aggregation of the cost becomes the budget then we have to plan for quality uh, uh, then develop the human resource plan uh, typically like uh, the human resource plan will will talk about from where to get these people how many of them when and what is the release plan, uh, the training plan, uh, uh, induction program plan, all those things need, will have to be defined. Then plan communication. Uh, uh, somewhere we discussed that, okay, 90 percentage of the project manager's time goes into communication and most of the issues within a project, uh, the ba basic root cause for that is improper communication. So we need to plan for communication to avoid all these issues. Uh, the first process, develop project management plan, is the process of documenting the actions necessary to define, prepare, integrate and coordinate all subsidiary plans. In a large project, uh, there can be a, an engineering team working on it, so there will be an engineering plan. There will be a QA department working on it, so there will be a QA plan. There will be a human resource department working for that project, so there will be a human resource plan. There's a quality department working on it, there's a quality plan, test plan, configuration management plan. So in a very large projects, all these all these sub plans will be owned by different entities. Uh, and uh, as a project manager in those kind of projects, one has to come out with an integrated project plan, which can be prepared uh, only when we have these independent plans and if you know the dates, start dates and end dates of the major activities or the plans of these independent plans so which can be integrated into the integrated project plan. 
So while developing the project plan, project management plan, we have the project charter is coming as an input because that is already done during initiation. Then outputs from other planning processes, so we'll be talking about it uh, later. And enterprise environmental factors we already discussed and organizational process assets also we already discussed. And then using the expert judgment, uh, the project manager comes out with the project management plan. Uh, the typical contents of a project management plan it has the pro it has the first thing it has the project approach slash strategy that means while while planning for a project we have to decide whether we are going to follow uh, 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 a tight waterfall model or will it be an iterative model based on uh, rapid prototyping or will we do all the work ourselves or as part of the strategy will there be outsourcing of work Will you be using reusable components? Will you be generating re reusable components during the project execution? So all these things need to be thought out. Uh, then a detailed scope statement will be part of the project plan and the WBS. The once the scope is defined, that gets decomposed into a work breakdown structure. And then comes the cost estimate, schedule, start and end dates for the major activities, uh, responsibility assignments performance measurement baselines like uh, what is a typical schedule variance allowed, what is a typical scope variance allowed, what is a typical cost variance allowed, the required staff, sometimes we call it as a ramp up and ramp down plan like when we start, generally when we start a project we have the team size is very small and as the project progresses the team size increases and uh, as the project reaches the, the finishing stages again we'll have a very lean team so we call it as a ramp up and ramp down plan. So all these things need to be documented. Then, okay, we need to think through the subsidiary management plans like the scope management plan, the schedule management plan, cost management, risk management, staff, quality, contract, all these things. See, for a small project, all these things may be documented into one single document. At the same time, when you really look at projects like this Burj Khalifa, which is the tallest tower in the world, for them, okay, there was a separate contracting department working for them. There are specialist contract professionals working for the project manager. And in that case, okay, they will have a separate contract management plan. Similarly, quality, there's a separate quality department working on the project and they will have a separate quality management plan. Similarly, there is a separate staffing department working and they will have a separate staffing plan. There's a separate risk management team working, separate risk management plan. So all these things are integrated into one cohesive integrated project plan. Uh, so and that is the that is the classical project manager's role. Uh, because this continuous integration of the subsidiary plans into the co one cohesive integrated project plan is an ongoing process throughout the project and that is a major job of a classical project manager. Now, while deciding on the planning, uh, we need to decide on the strategy for a project. A typical uh, an IT project, if you see, we have to decide on the, the life cycle methodologies. How many places will be outsourcing the work? How many components will be outsourced? How many components will be replaced with reusable components? How many reusable components will have to develop within the project? Identification of the classes, the objects, uh, will we outsource or or in source or will it will there be joint application development strategies so all these things need to be thought through at the beginning and those things have a direct bearing on your project plan so for a project where uh, the, let's say the customer himself doesn't know the requirements very very clearly and if you go with the fixed price uh, tight waterfall model then then it, there's a short prescription for project failure so we'll have to spend some time in defining or d or deciding the appropriate strategy for the project. Now, this framework may help you to come out with a strategy. Here we are talking about two parameters. One is the type of requirements we get for a project. The type of requirements we get could be erratic or fluctuating or routine or stable. And here it is the type of technology we are using for the project, like the bleeding edge, the leading edge, the familiar and the well-known. So if the team is working on uh, very new technologies and if the requirement itself is erratic and that is depicted by this yellow band 
then then we need a we need a kind of a PDS a plan do study and act uh, a quick uh, rapid prototyping or agile models will fit in here uh, but if the requirements are very very clear and the technology is also very very known to the team in that case again okay, we can we can go with a fully compartmentalized model like first you finish the requirements off sign off then you get into the design sign off then you get in the construction sign off so it goes like that or it could be a combination like since you have a grip on the requirements and the technology you have to go with an iterative model and once we have uh, grip on uh, both the technology and the requirements then the rest of the projects can be managed through uh, a tight uh, waterfall model so one has to the key thing is one has to spend some time and effort to uh, desire in deciding on the appropriate strategy for the project because every project is unique as per the definition of the project so a cut and paste strategy will not work here thank you